Hey! How are you? Oh, looking, you are looking wonderful. It's the complexion. It's the complexion that's... You've been drinking plenty of water, I can tell. It's good. It's good. If you haven't, you should be. But you still look amazing. So... With this video, all I want to do is ask you some questions to start off with. First of all, let me tell you, I love fruit. Fruit, man, love it. Love it, all types of fruit. Love tropical fruits, love normal supermarket fruits. Uh, the sweeter the better, for, for my personal taste. I'm not massive into like super tangy stuff, but um, you know, I still like those as well. I love so many different types of fruit. Would you agree that you like fruit as well? That fruit's, fruit's pretty rad, that it's pretty great. So, okay, flowers, flowers, let me say, let me say to you, flowers I think are very, very beautiful. And often I find myself, I'm at work and I'll, I'll some people, a lot of people neglect their gardens, but every now and then I will see someone's garden and I will see the flowers growing there and I'll go, mm, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful, garden uh, and I especially like those flowers there right would you agree that flowers are beautiful another thing I, I like to go out and um, you know I don't do it nearly as often as I'd like but I do go out and check out you know, our beautiful native uh, bushlands and forests and stuff. I love, I even lo like, I love everything from like the Dandenong Ranges and Warburton and stuff. That's gorgeous, gorgeous bushland. All the way through to, um, through to the, the, even just that little bit of bushland that's between the, the beach, you know, in Seaford and Frankston and stuff, how there's like the beach, um, and then there's the road, and in between there, there's that little kind of uh, desert-like bushland-type area. I love the, I, I love those things. I have lots of good memories of that, but I think it's beautiful. I think it's all beautiful. Would you agree that those bushland areas are beautiful? Mm, I would agree. I think they're gorgeous, and they're fun. And they're lovely. Do you think it's lovely? Do you think they're lovely to walk through? Do you think they're lovely to look at and touch and smell and all that sort of fun stuff? I'm sure you do. But back to the fruit, let me tell you something. Mm. When it comes to fruit, I love, as I've explained, massive fan of fruit. However, I kind of think that sometimes Fruit is better when it's incorporated into a larger thing. That thing might be, um, I don't know, like an apple pie, um, or um, I've had I've had pineapple cake. Oh, do I love pineapple cake? Mm. Or even like a pavlova, simple, right? Whatever. But I kind of usually like it combined into things a little bit more than I like um, just the fruit by itself, like generally speaking. Would you agree that sometimes it's nicer to have, you know, your cake, uh, your fruit cooked into something or combined with other things or fruit salad or whatever it is that you like with your favorite fruits? Would you say that you prefer prefer them usually not always but you know sometimes it's better would you agree with that now I love flowers I I got a thing for lilies and gerberas personally I think they, they're kind of very cool um, I don't know why I think I like lilies because they take time to open and then there's this beautiful flower inside and gerberas are just happy fluffy flowers I just kind of like that about them they're like so 
So I don't know. My brain, my brain thinks of so many reasons why I love them. However, I have seen there. Uh, I, you know, sometimes I've I've walked past a florist, or I've even walked into the florist, and I've seen flowers that are arranged in a beautiful and creative way that you know I may not have thought about, or maybe I have seen it before, but it's just it's just brings out the beauty in all the individual flowers the contrast between the colors and varieties you know that that a, a bouquet of one type of flower is nice but sometimes it's it's more beautiful when it's combined again combined with more stuff there's a better way of uh, creating a bouquet of flowers would you agree that that's more beautiful? Like, sometimes. Of course there are exceptions, but you say that sometimes it's more beautiful. Cool. Well, oh, that is so busy, look at that. Would you now, and, and, and then finally with the forests, would you say that forests, now, <laughs> me and my beautiful, lovely, caring, intelligent, funny, gorgeous, attractive, good cook uh, of a girlfriend. We went for a big long drive, we went from Melbourne, Adelaide, Darwin to Cairns and uh, let me tell you something, the Daintree rainforest of tropical far north Queensland is beautiful. It is so beautiful. So, so, so beautiful. There's um, different types of animals. It's more colorful because of flowers and the, the, there's like vines to swing off and like all sorts of stuff. You name it. It's, uh, there's some cool stuff there, right? And part of me thinks, you know what? This is kind of more beautiful in a way, depending on my mood than the forests I have back home. Now that might simply be because I'm used to what's what I'm used to, you know, and I'm sort of desensitized to it. But maybe maybe there is something to a a forest that's full of uh, color and and life and animals jumping through the trees and all that sort of stuff. You know? Maybe. I mean I've even been to Thailand, I've been to a few countries where there's rainforests <clears throat> and if I haven't been there I've seen them on on the internet or scrolling through my feeds and stuff like that and I see it and I think they're beautiful I think they're incredibly gorgeous would you agree that forests and little bushland areas or that sorry that um that tropical rainforests with all their variety of life and color and plants and fruits and flowers and all sorts of things do you think the rainforests are maybe sometimes depending on your mood more beautiful than what we have down here finally uh, back to the fruit I know I said finally before but finally back to the fruit we're finally back we're finally back to fruit Would you say that the existence of apple pie, lemon meringue pie, pavlovas, um, pineapple cake, various other types of muffins and stuff, fruit salad, whatever it fancies you tickle, um, do you think that the existence of these things, even wine, I suppose, um, is, is, a, is a future fruit preparation? Would you say that the existence of these things make, math almost mathematically make fruit less enjoyable, less delicious, less beautiful, less fragrant, do you think that because these things exist, fruit is now lowered? So if these cakes and stuff didn't exist, fruit would be eight out of 10. 
but because fruitcake and fruit cakes and and pies and salad, fruit salads and all this sort of stuff, because they exist, um, whatever value they had out of 10, now fruit has lower value. Maybe it's now off two out of 10. Cause I mean, you know, it's so compared to a apple pie, you know? Do you think that because beautiful arrangements of flowers exist, that an individual type of flower is now less beautiful and cannot be more beautiful? Because, you know, because these other things exist, because other people have figured out creative ways to make bouquets of flowers more beautiful by doing, incorporating other flowers. Do you think that that individual flower is now less attractive, smells less sweet, etc.? Finally, do you think that our native bushlands and forests down here in Melbourne are less beautiful, provide a less rich experience like a weaker experience because tropical far north Queensland exists and the Amazon exists and Thailand exists and all these other places with tropical rainforests. Do you think that because these places exist, our forests have their value lowered? Now, the astute of you may see where I'm going with this. If you know me and you know my videos, you may know where I'm going with this. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That incredibly gorgeous and intelligent woman that I'm dating, she, um, if I got her a bunch of flowers, I, she would love that bunch of flowers. If I did, if it was just one variety, she wouldn't be looking at a bunch of flowers, like a bunch of lilies or roses or gerberas or whatever other type of flowers I decide to give to her. She wouldn't be looking at them and going, you know what? I guess these are nice, but they'd be nicer if they had more types of flowers in them. And then thinking on the inside, Jeez, I wish he would have got me more flowers in there, more variety. Even a smaller bouquet of flowers, but just more variety, because it would have been so much more beautiful. No, she's, she's quite a uh, switched on woman, and she is, um, she, under, she, she appreciates things. She has a level of awareness that just goes, that just looks at the flowers for what they are, not for what other people have done and what other people have created and da 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 da. She's just looking at these flowers and what they mean to her. And they go, thank you so much, they're beautiful. Where can I put them in my house? Right, that's, that's what her brain is, does. Right? And in the same way, it's important to learn that skill that we're sort of being trained to not acknowledge because of, mainly because of social media, I think. But I mean, in general, like, I think our, our DNA lends us to compare ourselves to other people in a really negative way. Um, I think that, that sort of programs us to not, excuse me, to not, um, appreciate who we are right now for all the things that we've accomplished because just because other people have accomplished more doesn't mean that our value is less 
because that's a choice that we've kind of unconsciously made. Does that make sense? We've unconsciously decided that we, oh, PC MMX, that's a cool number plate. Um, we've unconsciously made the decision that we, <clears throat> we are only of high value if there is no, no one above us. How ridiculous is that? How dang ridiculous is that? We don't have as high a value unless everyone else is below us. And that's crazy, right? That's crazy. You know why? Because you're always going to be miserable if that's your attitude. And that's a choice. And it's a difficult habit to get out of. But you can choose to find ways to get out of it and acknowledge who you are as a person and be happy with that. In saying that, there's no reason why you can't... See, there's a difference between comparison and judgment and looking for inspiration, I suppose. See, with myself, I'm pretty happy with who I am, but I still watch videos of other people who have achieved things. In particular, to try and find out why and how they've achieved things that I haven't yet, right? I'm using it as inspiration. I don't look at them and compare myself and go, wow, I'm a real piece of shit, you know? Or I'm building something and then I see someone else build something very similar, but they've built it a trillion times better than mine. I don't look at it and go, wow, mine is trash, you know? I can appreciate their thing for what, what it is, for everything that it is. And nothing more and nothing less. That's a, that's a rare skill, like, that's a hard skill to program into your mind, you know? But if you can do that for everything that you witness before you in, your, in this experience of life, at the same time, you are doing the same thing for yourself, right? Then you are able then to, um, <clears throat> to move forwards in life and still, like simultaneously, this is a bit of a paradox because some people believe that if I'm, or if I already accept who I am and I already think I'm good enough, why would I ever, ever, ever bother to improve who I am? Like logically, that, that kind of makes a lot of sense. Like why would you bother doing that? But, you know, sometimes you do things not because you're gonna, because you have to or because you need to to achieve X, Y, and Z. I mean, um, you know, why bake a cake for yourself when you know a patisserie or bakery or whatever who can make it for just a little bit more, but you know it's going to taste better than what you make? Just because it's fun. Why would you bother doing anything crafty or like painting artistic? Why would you bother doing that when you could get art you could just print it off online. You know? For uh, You could print it off for a pretty low cost if you get someone with a massive printer, you know? Like, oh, I think Officeworks do large prints and stuff like that. You know, why would you bother doing it? Why would you bother making art for yourself? Because it's... Because your brain is wired to find that entertaining. Your brain is wired to be curious. Your brain is wired to um, to want to experience these things, to want to further your your abilities, and you don't necessarily want to learn to paint or learn to do woodwork because other people are out there that are better than you. You just want to give it a crack, right? In the same way, you know, like me, I'm 
I'm pretty onto this stuff, right? I, mate, a, a lot more than other people, and that has its pros and cons as well. You know, it's quite confronting when you see all the things that you need to work on. But it's um, it's not for me because I find it quite empowering because it means that I have a, I have an ability to be a better human being than I was yesterday, and I think that's that's actually an asset to me. Other people find it a burden because they don't they don't like doing the work work is a burden to them it's effort and and I think that's the real reason why people get upset by it it's not because they they have things pointed out to them that are that are wrong that's not the intrinsic reason I don't believe I believe it's because it points out that they have work to do and if they don't know how to achieve that then they're going to have a hard they're going to their brain is going to have unconscious conflict and stuff like this. It's going to be really hard for them. Um, kind of, kind of like laziness, I suppose, in a way. So, <clears throat> but just understand in yourself that you're enough. And at the same time, there's nothing wrong with trying to be better than who you are. It's good to accept your body to look at your body and go I'm fine with what I see in the mirror right at the same time this is so this seems like such a complicated thing for 90% of the world most people have a hard time getting their head around this but it's you can simultaneously accept what you see in the mirror right and say I'm gonna have a lot of benefits if I can gain some muscle um, cut out the food that makes my brain work slower, cut out drugs that affect my, um, my central nervous system, my dopamine levels, my serotonin levels, um, you know, maybe if you want to do those things, save them for a special occasion so it's not messing you up long term, you know, you can... <laughs> Uh, or don't do them at all. Just avoid them completely. That's fine too. Maybe you want to um, lose fat so that you don't get tired so easily. So your arteries aren't clogged up with shit that doesn't belong in there. You know, that's going to lead to, in the future, problems. If you decide to have children, then you're not going to be able to keep up with your children if you're overweight and unfit and all this sort of stuff. You're not going to be able to relate to them if you don't know how to relate to yourself and you haven't gone, you know, and and read books on learning how, learning these skills that you can learn to relate with other people, including your children, your family, your friends. That's going to make your, your social life and your relationships so much tighter because you are actually connecting with them and understanding them, right? It's okay to be happy with where you are right now, but see the benefits that you could achieve and just roll with it, right? And just give it a crack and see the benefits and be like, yeah, why not? Right now, I'm uh, cutting. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting really lean. I'm doing a, eating these particular types of foods and maintaining my level of exercise and eating at the partic particular times and all this sort of stuff. And um, I've actually, in the last couple of days, I didn't lose any weight the whole time except for the last like week or so, where I've lost, I've actually lost four kilos in a week. Um, and it's not water weight either, it's actual um, weight loss. Because my lovely girlfriend's looking at me and going, wow, that's, that's a big difference from um, a month ago, let alone a couple of weeks ago, right? So, um, and I'm doing it out of curiosity more than more than anything, but I'm cutting and I'm just doing it, just giving it a crack. Um, kind of feel better for it. Um, right now I'm running on a lot less sleep because I've just had so much going on, especially with my projects and stuff. So, but despite that, I'm pretty alert. I'm pretty with it. I just get tired when at the end of the day because I haven't got a good enough just because of that sleep debt, you know. But anyway, uh, I'm doing it so that not only can I 
I can see the bigger picture to me doing this, to cutting, right? Because I haven't really read of anyone trying the, the particular methods that I've used and the diets that I've, I've, I've formulated and all this sort of thing, and it seems to be working for me. Um, so I'm trying it out as an experiment and it seems to be working really, really well for me. Um, but here's the thing, the bigger picture is, is that um, if anyone wanted to lose a lot of weight in a fail, it, it, I'd say it's pretty healthy the way, like the diet that I've chosen and that I've formulated and all this sort of stuff feels pretty healthy. Like I'm not cutting out any, any stuff that I shouldn't be eating and all that sort of thing. Um, so losing the weight in a healthy way, uh, it intrinsically strengthens the mind. Um, yeah, it's, you know, if, if anyone wanted that, I, I can now teach them that. It's, it's a super simple thing. It's a super simple diet, but you know, it's, it is what it is. And it's, uh, uh, the bigger picture is, is that I can, I can contribute to the world if anyone chooses to listen to me. <laughs> uh, and if you've made it this far, then you are listening to me, aren't you? And you've, here's the golden secret for the, I, I, for losing weight really quickly. So anyway, um, yeah, um, but just, yeah, just, just have that little, um, don't be hypocritical, understand that, you know, you as a person, just, like, it's easy to look at other people and go, they say, oh, I'm shit, I'm this, I'm that, I'm rubbish, and then you go, oh, yeah, but you're also this, and you're that, and you're the other. Well... But when it comes to you, you're not like that. So it's easy to say it for other people, but it's hard to say for yourself. Well, that's uh, that's what we call an incongruence, because you can look at other people and see how you know wonderful they are, but you can't see it in yourself. There's a part of your brain that thinks judgment is 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 totally rad, right? And so you judge yourself so much because maybe because you think other people are judgmental and unconsciously you're the one who doesn't judge and who motivates other people and makes them feel good right um maybe that's that's your identity who knows i don't know i don't i'm not i'm not i don't even know who i'm talking to right now <laughs> i don't know what your brain's doing so anyway um yeah, just um, understand that when you're incongruent like that, that that it rubs off on other people. Other people see it, and your positive message has less weight when you don't believe it about yourself unconsciously through body language, vocal tonality, all these sorts of things, that if you believe honestly in your heart that, you know, you, you, you're fine, you're fine as well, then what you say to other people unconsciously has more weight to it and the people believe you, right? So that's why it's kind of so important to actually legitimately think that you're an all right type of human being. All right. Anyway, that's long enough. I was trying to cut this down to like 20 minutes and I nearly did it and then I added all this crap at the end. <laughs> anyway, have a great day, guys. I love you all. You're all beautiful. You're all wonderful. And I mean that congruently because I'm not friends with people that <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> uh, have a great day, guys. Bye.